Hey everybody! So today is oil change and coolant flush day here on our booses. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get ourselves a little bit cleaner, cleaner working area. Um, hmm. That's the best way to do this. Actually, I know. Here. Because we're ready to work on our bike. That was easy. All right. So we're ready to start tearing into this. I've already actually pulled out some of the harder to get at ones that you wouldn't be able to see me take out anyway because they're tucked up in underneath here. Um, <clears throat> part of the reason for doing this is my uh, editing software called Pinnacle um, has a uh, multi-camera editing mode now. And so I've got a camera there, camera there, and a little camera there. Um, so I wanted to try playing with that and I figured I might as well record something to, uh, to play with it with. So what I've got here is a four millimeter T-handled um, hex wrench um, and an eight millimeter because we've got these T-Rex frame sliders that you have to take off in order to get the fairing off. I've got a straight screwdriver just for popping these guys loose. So the ones that have like a little notch that you stick the screwdriver in and then turn it and that releases it. And then you can pop it right out. And then I've got a scratch all for these. <clears throat> Basically these, uh, these fasteners, once they're put in place, they're flush like this. You take the scratch all and just push the center through and that releases them so then you can pop them out easy. And that's one I've seen a lot of people have problems with, so it's good to know. Um, so the plastics under here, there's four pieces, one on top, one on the bottom, and then one on either side. And I've already taken these fasteners out. So to get this top one out, you kind of grab it from behind, pull it backwards so you're actually pushing it that way. So we slide it back and then Pull that past the outer or the, the upper fairing here. Um, these side ones, I'm gonna grab this little camera. These side ones, when you're pulling it, you kind of, hmm, how do I, there we go. Um, I think it'll, hmm, yeah, probably. You kind of have to push it, push it that way and pull out at the same time and that releases those little clips. Basically, if you look at this, um, there's a clip in here, like a little latch, if you can see that with this little camera, and then that fits into the hole right, right here. And so as you're pulling this, <laughs> get it lined up right again. Um, as you're pushing it away, that gets it's hard to get this camera lined up and point at something at the same time. Um, anyway, it gets that little latch out of that hole and magically it pops loose. Um, you know, I'm going to get the other side off here. Now, once you have this off, this side, there's another piece that fits into the fairing and you have to Make sure you have that loose first. Well. So this piece here fits into the fairing. So make sure you don't pull it because otherwise you could snap that off and that would be, that would not be good. Anyway, and then <clears throat> There's two of these little fasteners underneath the front end here on the bottom. So you just have to get your screwdriver into that, rotate, and that pulls them loose. Once you have those two out, Then the two fairings, the two side fairings will kind of pull apart 
and give you access to get this guy out of there. There. So, and then there is this other shroud that goes around your oil cooler for your, well, your oil cooler. <laughs> um, so that's it for the front end. Then, first thing I need to do is take this T-Rex deal off of here. And these are pretty cool because they basically give you a frame slider that doesn't require cutting the plastics. So, and they're pretty heavy. I mean, this is like a solid aluminum deal that sticks out from a steel crossbar. And then once we get the fairing off, you can actually see how that mounts onto the, onto the uh, frame. So to get this guy out, we've got one screw here needs to come out and one here and then got another one down here And then there's a little plastic piece that covers up the back end here that has these little press-in fasteners again. I'll take that out on both sides. There's one. Then I have to go around to the other side. To get that one off. And then <clears throat> this guy will just pop right off. So we've got that out, and now, <clears throat> usually I have my tank lifted up, so we'll have to see if this works without the tank up. I think it will. And there's another one of these little guys. One of the press-in fasteners up here. So, that should be all we need now. There's a... There's a little plastic piece that sticks down into the frame in here, so I need to see if I can get that. No, I think I'm gonna need need to take the tank up. So because this is a Busa, it came with this cool little, uh, um, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> stand for the, for the tank. So we can pop out these two. <clears throat> and 
And then for my cell phone, I've got this cool little uh, um, Ram mount doohickey. It's like a little spring-loaded hold my phone. So, this is the other thing. Those, I've got a, uh, a Cena 20S for the wife and I to be able to talk to each other and to listen to music and stuff, and that thing is incredible. Just just bought it finally. I had bought a uh, oh Scala Rider. Um, oops, I take the seat off. I forgot that too. Sure, that is a six six millimeter. It's the first time I've used the kickstand with my uh, with my RAM doohickey. The kickstand is supposed to go into that, into the top of your triple tree. Anyway, so the reason we had to lift that tank up is there's a little plastic um, pin that goes down into the frame that you need to lift up on. And I couldn't get it past the uh, past the tank, so anyway, now it is. Oh, there's one more, one more we need to take out right up here. So there's that. Now, lift that up, get this guy to come past it. There we go. And now, this is the trickiest part about getting these off. You have to kind of, it's supposed to, it's supposed to be magic. You're supposed to be able to just give it a little tap and it pops loose, but that's never been my experience. You pretty much have to sit and fight with it a little bit, but Make sure you have all your tabs clear. I um, brought my bike in to have it worked on once and I had a free oil change. And they uh, broke that piece off inside mine. So <clears throat> I don't have to worry about that, I guess, but so just have to kind of work it back and forth. The plastic isn't, doesn't uh, doesn't slide as nicely as it's meant to. There we go. So once you have it, once it lets go, then it's easy. And basically, you can see there's like these little latches here. And what's supposed to happen is as you push it, it rides up on this and pushes that down and they kind of clear the thing and whatever. But as you saw, you had to kind of have to kind of fight with it. It's not too bad though. So now we have access to all our stuff. Oh, that reminds me since I'm down here. Um, right here, there's a viewport. This is for when you're doing your uh, doing your valve clearance. There's a viewport right here, and you turn the crank here, so you get them lined up, like position one, two, three, whatever it is. Um, it's been a while since I did it, but you get them lined up, and when they're lined up here, you can go up top and check your the corresponding valves for, for clearance when you're doing your valve lash. Um, 
anyway, now we can get at the uh, at the oil filter. That's what all that was about, is to get at the damn oil filter. That's the one thing about the booster that doesn't make me happy. It's like, come on, really? Couldn't we just have the pipes open just, just wide enough to get the filter passed or something? I mean, if the pipes were just not even an inch wider, you could get the filter past it. Oh well. But it gives you a chance to take it apart and inspect everything. Oh, and uh, the... How did that work? <laughs> it's hard to remember things sometimes. Ah, okay. So, you know what? If you want to know how the T-Rex works, they've got instructions on their site. You can look at that. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Um, anyway, this next part is just changing oil. Nobody needs to watch that. I'll be back. To so, just a couple things. I wasn't going to pop in for the uh, oil change part of this, but this is awesome for taking the oil filters off this bike because you can reach in there and just kind of grab onto the grab onto the oil filter and give it a turn and get it loosened up and <clears throat> I'm a big fan of AMS oil <laughs> and no they're not paying me to say that although I'm gonna try some uh, mobile one and some other motorcycle oils and see if they uh, if they work as well um, Lisa's actually getting mobile one we still had three bottles of AMS oil so I'm using this on mine, and then she's going to use the mobile one, and we'll see how it uh, how it holds up. Basically, I had bought a uh, Ninja a while back with like 30,000 miles on it, and the clutch was a little slippy and whatnot, and I thought that I was going to need to replace it. And the first oil change, I threw AMS oil in, and it crabbed great. So I don't know if there was some detergent oil in it or something that was making it slip or what the case was, but since then I've... I always bought AMS oil, so now I'm going to try some of the others because AMS oil is getting a little bit crazy on this. I mean, when I started buying it, it was 8 bucks a quart, and now it's 12 bucks a quart for, yeah. So, we'll see. We'll see how the Mobile One works. That stuff's like half the price. So, anyway, I'm going to get this oil change done, and then we'll come back and put the fairings on. All right, so our oil change is complete, and now it's time to get our fairings back on. Start, well, and reverse order. Put this here, uh, the side fairing on first. And usually getting this on is pretty easy, but I'm sure it'll be tough since I'm recording this. Something has to go wrong, right? Oh, for one thing, I don't have my tank up anymore because I've got this little um, dealie for the for the um, RAM um, cell phone holder thing in place. It doesn't fit down the triple tree anymore and I don't like the idea of having it just sitting there all night so I took it down. Um, so the biggest trick here is getting everything lined up, pushed into place. It's actually easier on this than on the Gen 1s though. So So there we are. That's most of it. I'm getting that part on anyway. So now, and everything lines up pretty good. I'm really impressed with Suzuki for that. I mean, a lot of a lot of manufacturers when you're putting putting it back together, it's kind of like you got to hold everything and try to get it to get it to line up and it's just not quite, you know, the fit isn't quite this quite perfect. <laughs> and these, it's like, once it snaps into place, you just start, uh, start throwing the screws in and it's perfect. All 
right, and then I pick the nicest little press in one here, since the other ones all go underneath and get all greasy and yucky. Yeah, I just said yucky. Oh, I can't put that one on yet. I have to put this guy in place first. So what you want to do is get this kind of snapped in place because there's a whole bunch of like you got the clip here, clip here, and then this hole and a clip back here that all have to fit together. So before putting the other piece in back here, I always get this put together because it's kind of tricky to line it up sometimes. It's not bad, but a little bit, a little bit tricky. So that's it. And then the plastic parts of this fit on the inside of the two metal pieces in the back. So now I'll put this screw in place. Let's make sure it holds it all together for me until I get the plastic or until I get the plastic fasteners in place. Back here uses these little press in ones that use a screwdriver to take apart. Well, there's that side, and we're most of the way done doing the reassembly here. And of course, the heat would turn on while I'm recording this. I'll have to turn that off. It's plenty warm. I didn't really need the heat on at all today. Just turn it on from yesterday. So I'll still run for a second, but whatever. Um, next thing, you start from the bottom on the building the building the front here. So you just kind of slip this thing through here. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but it, it works. Kind of wiggle it around till it gets in there. And then line up the one side, snap it in place, and line up the other one here. Okay, so there's that. And then we grab the next two little snapping pieces. This part. I've done it without laying down, but it's so much easier just to lay down and be able to see what you're doing. So you got to get the one part over and the other part under. And it's, it is tricky to do this without being able to see what you're up to. A little tricky even when you can see. Not so much tricky, just whatever. Not so much tricky, just tricky. All right, so now this one with the little thing sticking out goes on, well, my right side, but the left side of the bike. Um, you have to make sure you get that little. Well, first you want to line up the bottom, which, whatever. <clears throat> line up the bottom, and you, the, I should have shown that. The pieces interlock. Uh, I 
Wow. I forgot about the little tab that sticks out in the back. There we go. There's a little, a little um, pin that sticks out and fits into these little holes on the side. And I forgot to put it in on that side, so I had to pull it back out and put it in. So anyway, there's these little tabs on the bottom here. And you just slip those in first. And then with it kind of tilted, you snap in the bottom one. And usually what I do is snap, well, on this one, the, the pin is longer, so you have to get the pin in first. On the other side, you can put the bottom one in first and then slip the pin in place and then snap the top. But, so on this one, you get the bottom lined up first. And then reach up and make sure you have your pin in place. And then once you have everything lined up, kind of feel along the bottom there, make sure that those two are lined up good. And then just squeeze, squeeze. And there it is. So that's that. Now this guy is always a little bit harder, but he's not so bad. <clears throat> what you want to do is push it in first. You know, push it all back as far as you can and get these two little tabs in. And usually what I do is rotate it um, so it's kind of like coming over this direction more. So the front so the front is instead of facing straight ahead is kind of off to the side. And that lets you get those two in place, the two tabs up in the front. And then you just have to try to work these uh, the tabs on the side of it into the pieces that the side pieces that we just put in. And that can go can go easily and <laughs> can be a pain. It all depends. And I suppose if I did this regularly, I'd be smoother at it. But I've, you know, I mean, I've done it probably a couple dozen times. But there's a year, well, at least several months in between every time. So never quite get my. Uh, Whatever. Never get enough practice in. No, I'm almost lined up. This one isn't quite in there. Wondering if I just need to pull it down. There we go. Oh, there. That perfect. All right. So now we just take these little push pins and reset them, basically push it so that the pin sticks out through the top. And you just stick them in there and then push them with your finger. And that's all it takes to lock those guys in place. Remember some, some of the bikes I had before, or worked on um, that used screws up in, you know, underneath like that. It was horrible I'm trying to sit there and wrench on stuff that you can't even see. You can barely get your hand in there and you have to try to get a screwdriver onto it. And these things are beautiful for that. I mean, it's kind of one of those things you don't know. Uh, you don't know how good things are unless you've had them bad or whatever. Yeah. Then again, having to get a screw in is not terrible either, I suppose. But it's all perspective. And yeah, this part of the job is pretty much just feeling around and finding the finding the holes for these fasteners because you really can't see much up in there. So, last two for the front. These guys are a little harder to get in sometimes because they don't if the uh, if the oil cooler not just so. There's these little plastic tabs that it goes into. What ends up happening is, oh, whoops. These tabs are not always squeezed together as tight as they need to be. 
and they don't make it through the little plastic tab on the inside, even though they made it through. Okay, there's that one. I have one more. And then, and then we put our frame slider in and put the tank and the seat back and we're done. There we go. That one worked well. All right. So, and basically there's just this little bracket that these guys fit into. And these are actually have come in useful a couple times, just, well, once, I guess. Lisa tipped hers over and in Branson there was a, a parking lot that was really slopey and whatnot and she had the trailer on and she stopped just a little bit, a little bit cockeyed and didn't have her right foot down far enough and because of the slope of the, of the driveway there coming into that parking lot, she lost her balance and just tipped the bike over. I mean, she was stopped and everything, so it was no big deal, but, but it ended up just scratching up the, uh, the side of the trailer and her, her frame slider, and that was it. So, could have been, could have been worse if it, if it didn't have the frame sliders on there, because basically it was the only part of the bike that was touching was, was the frame slider, so. So she got out of it with just a couple of scratches on the bike and and that was it. She was, you know, bruised ego, of course. But what you gonna do? So there is this and this. And then, seat, and we're done. The other cool thing about doing your own work because when you have the bike taken apart, you get a chance to clean everything up and scrub it up and whatnot, so. Well, oh hey, I'm a little tall for the camera. <laughs> so, anyway, so that's that. I've got to put my, uh, my little cell phone mount and my hump back on, but then we're done. So, I decided not to do the uh, coolant this time because well, we want to get out and ride, and it's like 65 degrees today and sunny, so. Sure, that's what today holds. So I guess, now that I'm done, we're going to go ahead and get out and ride. Oh, no. Another one? No, we're going to go ride first. Bye. <laughs>